Okay, let's uh, read off some more key messages from this uh, WHO and UN Commission reports. Uh, this is about vulnerability of coastal areas and bathing waters in extreme weather events. You know how the Europeans love their bathing waters. Uh, key messages here, variations in the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events will pose serious challenges to the management of unique coastal ecological and cultural systems. Vulnerable coastal systems include fisheries, agriculture, tourism, marine and freshwater resources, health infrastructure and municipal water supply and sanitation systems. Both major extremes of the global climate change uh, can have serious impacts on coastal areas as detailed here. Okay. Uh, Drying and water scarcity may result in the over-exploitation of groundwater resources, reducing their availability as well as impairing the quality through contaminant concentrations with harmful consequences for water supply to the population, agriculture and energy production. Extreme rainfall and storms may result in increased runoff, river discharge, more intense erosion and the mobilization of chemical biological contaminants by surface runoff from urban and agricultural areas. So we looked at technologies for too little water and too much water and disaster before. This is along the same lines. A combination of rising sea levels and more intensive coastal storms would create the highest environmental and health risk stemming from a, a salinization of water supplies, including aquifers used for drinking water. The major problem is that in most if not all of the coastal regions, groundwater is a key resource of water supply, especially of drinking water. More than 2 billion people worldwide depend on the groundwater. Saline water intrusion accelerated by both the rising sea level and the overexploitation of groundwater resources in a drying climate poses both quantitative and qualitative risks to the population. Extreme storm surges combined with rising sea level could result in much higher uh, rates of coastal erosion which would in turn further increase saline water intrusion. A 5% increase in salt water con content will rule out many important uses including drinking water supply and irrigation of crops, parks and gardens and will threaten groundwater dependent ecosystems. One approach is to better understanding the vulnerability of coastal areas and recreational water environments to the effects of climate change is to apply the deep dipser driver's pressure state impacts and responses framework this is done in table 9 which i'm not going to read i suspect okay uh, moving on to impacts of climate change and extreme events on waterborne diseases and human health. Again, we have covered some of this already in the adaptation for health. Key messages, temperature increases, rainfall fluctuations, periods of droughts and heat waves, as well as SLR sea level rise have a significant potential to affect freshwater resources, wastewater and land related processes and through this affect, uh, through this affect human health. So drought and severe water can favor infectious disease outbreaks and impair water quality, hygiene and sanitation. Heat waves may imply restrictions and prioritization of water use, control of drinking water quality and compromised uh, efficiency of sanitation systems. Cold spells may affect water, electricity and heating systems availability with potential impacts on population health and health service delivery. Flooding has direct health effects such as drowning injuries, diarrheal diseases, vector-borne diseases, respiratory infections, skin and eye infections, and mental health problems as well. Heavy rainfall and floods can cause ore flooding of sewage treatment plants, runoff of animal uh, dejections, and manure with uh, consequent increase of contamination of surface water and soil. <clears throat> Land use in water catchment areas is gaining uh, in importance to assess and manage risks to human health. Rains lead to higher concentrations of pathogens in the aquatic environment affecting the quality of bathing water, drinking water resources and potentially some floods. Sorry, some foods such as uh, aquatic and aquaculture products. Heavy rains and floods can also increase the nutrient availability of lakes inducing cyanobacterial 
proliferation which has impacts on fisheries and water quality, oxygen uh, mortality or fish kill and so on. Ecosystems changes may allow colonization of pathogens by hitherto unaffected environments. Extreme weather events will pose new challenges to the protection and promotion of human health. Current safeguards will need to be assessed and techno technologies capable of adapting to the range of climate change scenarios need to be identified and prioritized. Uh, moving on to water safety plans and approach to managing risks associated with extreme weather events. Key messages here. Water safety plans or WSPs are introduced by WHO's guidelines for drinking water quality in 2006 as a comprehensive risk assessment and risk management approach that encompasses all steps in water supply from catchments to consumers. The aim is clear to consistently ensure that safety and accessibility of a drinking water supply is resilient to such perturbations. WSP's water safety plans are likely to be an important instrument for water services to extreme weather events because of the flexible nature of their component steps. WSP team offers the possibility of including meteorologists, hydrologists and geohydrologists from the beginning of uh, from the beginning of the risk assessment risk management process. Uh, the description of water supply systems allows the identification of areas where changes in short-term weather pattern or the long-term climate change could create physical problems during periods of unusual precipitation or drought. So we talked about chronic stresses and uh, acute stresses. This is what is being discussed. During the identification of hazards and assessment of risks, extreme weather events can be treated in the same manner as those threats uh, to the integrity and functioning of the water supply. It could be earthquakes or human uh, impacts, terrorist attacks, whatever. Determination and validation of control measures allows the assessment of effectiveness of control measures during quality changes of the resource waters, for example, higher pathogen loads during rainfall. This is very true for a place like India where spring is very hot and humid, so pathogen loads ex uh, explode and then monsoon comes and spreads it out like you know, becomes entire country becomes a petri dish for all sorts of uh, diseases. Risk prioritization allows the correct placement of extreme weather in the overall risk assessment and hence the allocation of sufficient resources to address the issue. Improvement plans can be tailored to include the specific challenges posed by extreme weather. A water safety plan is an effective framework for assessing and addressing the risks from extreme weather and ensuring continued functioning of water supply systems. Getting closer, adaptation measures for water supply utilities in extreme weather events. Key messages, extreme weather events could affect the efficiency of drinking water treatment processes and the stability of drinking water in distribution. Water supplies can prepare to minimize the impact of extreme events uh, on the services rendered in a number of ways. So there are general adaptation measures for drought, adaptation measures for floods and emergency distribution of alternative water supplies. <clears throat> so here in general, strengthen ongoing communication with meteorological forecasting offices so that dam operators, water resource managers, sanitation plant operators, etc. know what's on the horizon at short and long terms. Implement proactive measures to identify changes in quantity and quality of resources uh, water. Identify alternative sources and ensure their timely use. Plan in advance measures. Uh, plan in advance measures that should be taken if a critical site becomes unavailable due to an extreme event. Development emergency, sorry, develop ener emergency plans including the role of each organizational component, individual or team that will respond. Uh, adaptation measures for drought, we have looked at it already but to repeat a few points, review plant and in the context of water sanitation, water safety, water supply. Review plant and equipment to ensure it remains appropriate for any reduction in flow or change in source quality. Reduce leakage in a proactive manner uh, by re-evaluating the acceptable economic level of leakage admitted under nominal conditions. Where pressure or flow reductions are implemented, take care to ensure a minimum supply as well as to meet the specific needs of vulnerable groups. 
restrictions on water use need to be carefully communicated to consumers you know don't water the lawns and don't waste too much water in the shower collect the cold water before the shower gets hot and so on and so forth adaptation measures for floods review the siting of water water treatment plant in the flood plain so with changing uh, rainfall rates uh, you need to go back and see if water treatment plants are appropriately placed <coughs> and what the alternatives are in dealing with correction. Develop in a proactive manner site-specific plans that identify not only safe actions and escape routes for staff, but also minimize the impact of flood water on operational equipment. Develop operational programs to regain drinking water supply systems after flooding so you are very quickly back to functionality for supply of drinking water. An emergency distribution of alternative water supplies by making plans to meet the drinking and sanitary requirements of the population at all times. Okay. Uh, 8.1, I think that's the last one. Adaptation measures for drainage, sewerage, and wastewater treatment. Management and operators of sanitation systems follow a similar approach to those responsible for water supply systems in adapting to extreme weather events. However, they face some specific challenges. So this is adaptation measures for drainage, sewerage, and wastewater treatment. To assess the risk level of potential impacts of water events on drainage and sewer systems and uh, wastewater treatment plants, a punctual analysis should be performed for each element of the systems and under different circumstances of flood and intense rain, as well as drought and prolonged water scarcity, increased temperature and heat waves. Generally speaking, extremely intense rainfall and river flooding are characterized by a primary risk for public safety while heat waves or extended droughts generally imply a delayed secondary effect on drainage and wastewater systems, especially in urban areas. Weather sensitive design criteria are the primary means for climate proofing in new drainage networks. In designing adaptation measures for sanitation systems in extreme weather events, it's also necessary to know that Every extreme hydrological situation causes fluctuations in pollutant concentrations in wastewater inflow to the was wastewater treatment plants and thus affects the efficiency of the treatment process. The differences in biochemical load cause problems in different technological uh, sections and related treatment processes. So you now have to design wastewater treatments to account for these variations at rapid rates with extreme events. In existing networks, the highest hydraulic capacity should be assured by undertaking periodical maintenance and cleaning of the most significant nodes of the network. So there is a network analysis, resilience analysis, failures, recovery rates, and so on, which help with these criticality tests. With small networks and limited budgets, decentralized systems face different constraints to climate proofing management and they should have close links with the main environmental authorities and even agreements with centralized systems management for emergency interventions. The precondition for handling an emergency well is skilled. Let me read that again. The precondition for handling an emergency well is skilled staff able to recognize the danger, analyze the risk and respond properly. Staff should be properly trained and system regulatory uh, regular and the system regularly tested for emergencies. Another important priority is good communication among everyone involved, system operators, owners, system administration, river basin authorities, the management of official rescue systems, and all other stakeholders. Okay, so that's a quick run through uh, on this long report, but you can follow up and uh, look at the details that are of particular interest to you along with the references that are provided in there okay so that concludes uh, for now the adaptation in the water sector will move to the uh, you know urban resilience community resilience adaptation through the holocene and so on in the coming sections okay <laughs>